Section 1.4, Extrema and Average Rates of Change. We have increasing and decreasing behavior. An analysis of a function can also include a description of the intervals on which the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. Consider the graph of f of x shown. As you move from left to right, f of x is increasing or rising on negative infinity to negative 5. So as we go left to right, this function is increasing from negative infinity to negative 5 constant from negative 5 to 0, and then decreasing from 0 to infinity. And when we say it's decreasing from 0 to infinity, we mean the x value 0 to infinity, not really the y, because that would be going down to negative infinity. Example 1, analyze increasing and decreasing behavior. Use the graph of each function to estimate intervals to the nearest 0.5 unit on which the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. Support the answers numerically. This function is decreasing the entire time. So we'll say decreasing on negative infinity to infinity. On letter B, uh, this function is increasing. So let's put increasing as we go left to right from negative infinity to negative one. And of course, we're talking about the x values here, not the y values. And then decreasing from negative one to one. So decreasing from negative one to one. And then after x is one, this function increases. So from one to infinity, this function is increasing. So then we union that with one to infinity on uh, increasing. Use the graph of each function to estimate the intervals to the nearest 0.5, so increasing and decreasing again. Now this function decreases as we go left to right on negative infinity to 2, and this is x value, so negative infinity to 2, this function decreases, and then after 2, this function increases, so increases 2 to infinity. On the last one, 1b, this function increases on negative infinity to, let's say, negative 3. Uh, and then constant, constant, uh, from negative 3 to infinity. Critical points of a function are those points at which a line drawn tangent to the curve is horizontal or vertical. Extrema are critical points at which a function changes its increasing or decreasing behavior. At these points, the function has a maximum or a minimum value, either relative or absolute. A point of inflection can also be a critical point. At these points, the graph changes its shape, but not its increasing or decreasing behavior. Instead, the curve changes from being bent upward to being bent downward, or vice versa, and we call that concavity. So at maximums or at minimums, we can draw a tangent line that is horizontal uh, to the curve. And then another critical point is called point of inflection, where it goes from being concave up to being concave down. A relative maximum of a function f is the greatest or smallest value f of x can attain on some interval of the domain. An absolute maximum is the greatest smallest value function f can attain over its entire domain. So here we have an absolute minimum. It's the, the lowest point overall. It's also a local minimum. Here we have a local maximum. Here's just a local minimum. Here is the absolute maximum, and it's a local maximum also. And here we have just the local minimum. Estimate and classify the extrema uh, for the graph of f of x. So here is a maximum, and here is a minimum. Now this is the point, let's say negative 0.4 comma 0.1. So here we have a local, local maximum of, here's the y value of 0.1. And then we say at x equals negative 0.4. Here we have a local minimum, which is the 0.1 negative 1. So now we have a local minimum of, uh, negative uh, 1, and then that's happening at x equals 1. Use a calculator, a graphing calculator, approximate extremic. Approximate to the nearest hundredth the relative or absolute extrema of this function. State the x values where they occur, and we're going to do all of that. So we have y equals 
negative 4x to the third, and then minus 8x squared, plus 9x, and then minus 4. Let's graph that. And we can't see a lot of it, so we're going to have to change the window. Let's uh, lower the y value for the window. Let's go, uh, how about negative 20? Let's see if we can see those minimums down there with negative 20. Not quite, not quite. So let's uh, let's go back to window. And what if we did, I'll bet negative 40 is going to get it for sure. I hope anyway. And there we have it. So we have a local minimum here and a local maximum. Let's get this local minimum. We're going to go second, calculate, and number three is the minimum. So uh, it says left bound, left bound right here. So here's to the left of the minimum. Then we arrow to the right to get to the right side of the minimum. And then it says guess. So in other words, it says get us close to that minimum. And so we have a local, local minimum of, to the nearest hundredth, uh, local minimum of negative 22.81 at x equals negative 1.76. And now we have a local maximum as well. We'll go second calculate. Number four is a maximum. So we're going to go to the left of the maximum, about right there. And then to the right of the maximum, which is about right there. And we're going to back up and guess. And we guess uh, right there. So we have a local maximum of how about negative 1.93 at x equals 0.43. Average rate of change. In algebra, you learn that the slope between any two points on the graph of a linear function represents a constant rate of change. For a nonlinear function, the slope changes between different pairs of points. So we can only talk about the average rate of change between any two points. Here we have average rate of change. The average rate of change between any two points on the graph of f is the slope of the line through these points, through those points. The line through two points on a curve is called a secant line. The slope of the secant line is denoted by slope subsecant. The average rate of change on the interval x1, x2 is f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So we have this average rate of change between two points is the slope of the secant line. For example, if this was the distance a car traveled, for example, the car is at mile marker number uh, 10, and then it, it goes farther, then maybe comes back, and then it's at mile marker uh, number uh, 20 over here, uh, then uh, the distance 20 divided uh, minus 10, that'd be the distance over the amount of time. So that'd be like miles per hour. So that'd be the average rate of change of, let's say, a car. Well, we have average rate of change of a function here. And uh, so we need f of negative 1, we always do the last first, minus f of negative 2. And then we're going to divide that by negative 1 minus negative 2. So this is, just, uh, this is just slope of the secant line. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's find out what is uh, f of negative 1. That would be uh, 1 minus 3 and then minus. If we plug negative 2 in, uh, that's going to give us uh, 8 and then minus 6. And this is all over. Uh, that's just going to be 1. So negative 2 minus 2. Uh, that's going to be negative 4. Now, what do we get when we plug 1 in? We get negative 1 plus 3, because we're going to do uh, f of 1 minus f of 0 over 1 minus 0 to find average rate of change. So we plug the 1 in. Now we need to plug the 0 in, which is 0, over 1. So we end up with 2. The height of an object that is thrown straight up from a height of 4 feet above ground is given by this function, where t is the time in seconds after the object is thrown. Find and interpret the average speed of the object from 1.25 to 1.75 seconds. We need h of 1.75 minus f of 1.25 over, or divided by, 1.75 minus 1.25. Two five. So let's plug that into the calculator. We have negative 16 uh, and then times. What do we need? We need 
uh, 1.1.75 squared and then plus 30 times 1.75 and then plus 4. Let's get that answer. And then we can minus in parentheses negative 16 times uh, 1.25 plus 30 times 1.25 and then plus 4. So we subtract the 2, we get negative 14, and we need to divide that by uh, 0.5, which is negative 28. So we have negative 28. Height of an object thrown straight up from a height of 4 feet above the ground uh, is given by, or t is a time, let's see, so t is a time in seconds. Object is thrown, let's see, feet, feet per second. That's what I wanted to find out. Feet per second, that is the average rate of change uh, the object is falling. And it's falling, I know it's falling because the average rate of change is negative.